Greetings friends, this is Survival Doc. In this video, I'm going to talk about our bug out bags. This is my bug out bag, and this is my wife's bug out bag. These are military Alice packs. For my wife, because she is a much smaller frame, I got a medium Alice pack. And for myself, I got a large Alice pack. Now, I want to make a comment about the color of these bags. In, a, in another video that I made, I talked about the disadvantages of using camo and um, OD or olive drab green or military looking green. Um, and I made the point that when you, when you bug out, you don't want to look real militant. Well, <clears throat> here I am with OD green gear and woodland camo gear. And I'd like to explain why. Uh, one reason is because these are military surplus and I got these bags very, very, very cheaply. Uh, now, if I were to go out to uh, a camping or a backpacking store and buy bags of this quality, they would cost a few hundred dollars. Um, and by buying military surplus, I'm able to get these bags for around $40 a piece. All right, and that's an important factor because that allows us to have other money that we can spend on other survival supplies. I don't want to put all of our money in these bags. And, and another consideration is that uh, camo is very stylish. I, I see women with woodland camo purses. I see infants wearing pajamas of woodland camo. And of course you see people of all social walks of life wearing camo clothing. So because us camo has been widely accepted as, uh, as being stylish these days, it doesn't really stick out as being militant uh, like it might have in the past. So I'm not really concerned about that. And of course, camo does have the advantage that if you do have to hit the woods, uh, it does allow you to blend in more. So looking at the pros and the cons, I decided to go with the OD green and the camo material. But primarily because this is military surplus material. Military surplus material is very, very, very well made. Uh, it is well thought out as far as the design of all the features. And it's just, you just cannot get a comparable quality for the price. Now, I'm going to go over the contents of our bug out bags. It's my wife's and mine. I'm not going to go over all the contents in her bag because there's a lot of duplication in her bag. I'm just going to point out a few differences. If you notice, I have our walking shoes right on top here. And the reason for that is if we have the bug out, then the first thing she's going to want to do is put on some good walking shoes. So she grabs her bag, she takes the shoes off immediately and puts the shoes on and she's ready to walk. And then these also have gloves. Uh, if the weather is cold, she has some warm gloves right there to put on. Now, you see we have a sleeping bag cover down here. This is um, a Gore-Tex. It's uh, waterproof. And also I have these carriers right here that are made to fasten to the bottom of these um, um, army packs. And uh, I got these uh, straps here for about two bucks a piece at uh, Main Military Supply. All right, another um, item we have here there's a sleeping bag inside this bag of course but we also have a sleeping bag bivy cover this is Gore-Tex this is not a sleeping bag but this is actually a cover that your sleeping bag goes in it's a mummy style bag all right this is also Gore-Tex it is waterproof so when you put this around your sleeping bag you can actually uh, sleep in the rain and and keep fairly dry. On the side of uh, my wife's bag as well as my own we have our finish uh, gas mask. I don't know if we'll ever need gas mask when bugging out and there's also a filter in here. Um, I don't know if we'll ever need a gas mask but if we do it's something that should certainly come in handy. Um, also I had this extra space in there so these are some freeze-dried foods that I put in here. On these outside pouches, on the outside pouches, pouches you want to put things that um, you, you might want to be, be able to get to uh, in a hurry without having to open the entire bag. Oh, much easier. All right, in here, again, have um, 
freeze-dried foods. Now, the one thing I like about freeze-dried food is this is almost weightless. It's very, very, very light, so you can pack a lot of food in very small places with very little weight. And another advantage of freeze-dried food is it's ready to eat. These are green beans, these are peaches. You can just open this and eat them right out of the pouch. Uh, and they're del delicious that way. But you can also um, cook them, of course. You can also soak them in water and reconstitute them and have uh, something very close to fresh food. Over here, we have uh, a poncho, very important when, uh, if you're bugging out when the rain starts coming. Uh, it's very good to have a good quality poncho that will cover not only you, but will also cover your pack too, so your contents don't all get wet. There's a mosquito net. You put this over your head to keep mosquitoes from biting you. In here I have more freeze-dried food. We also have two-way radios. We have a set of two-way radios. One goes in my wife's bag, the other goes in my bag. Uh, we use the type of rechargeable batteries in here that will hold a charge for three years uh, when it's not in use. So that if you forget to charge it up every year, you're still good. Over here we have um, first aid kit. Uh, this is a very handy item that um, every bug out bag should have. This is a water filter. This is a um, type of water filter. It's like a straw. You put this fasten this portion on top of this portion is a charcoal, charcoal block in here and this allows you to actually stick the um, straw down in the water and drink from a stream. But we also have other um, water filtering uh, filters in here. Matches of course. Here is a magnesium fire starter. I have another one in my bag. You'll see a lot of redundancy uh, between our bags in case we get uh, separated she has her own equipment. There's a whistle, signaling whistle, pocket knife. And we'll take a quick look inside the bag. Now, one thing my wife has in her bag that I don't have is a book. And of course, when you're bugging out, there may be times when you're bored and a lot of people will consider this a just a, an extra item that you don't need. But um, I think this particular book could come in very handy. Toiletries, a towel, toilet paper. There's a rubber galoshers that she can put over her shoes if it's raining. Cooking kit. Of course there's extra clothing in here, extra warm clothing like a long underwear, warm socks, um, sweater. And um, when you bug out, you may be bugging out in the daytime and it may not be real co cold, but it tends to get cooler at night. And so you want to dress in layers. And so when the nighttime comes, the temperature drops, she does have some extra layers of clothing that she can put on in here. Okay, I'm not gonna go over all the contents of her bag. Because as I said, there is some redundancy. The main bag I want to show you is my bag. Okay, this is my bug out bag. These are the shoes I'm going to be wearing. Like my wife, I have the shoes stored on top of my bag. That way if we have to bug out, the shoes are right there ready to put on. Uh, no wasted time looking for the, the right shoes. These shoes stay with the bag. Just like my wife's shoes, they stay with the bag. We don't use them for any other purpose. Now we do wear them when we wear our bug out bags. Uh, now these bags are heavy. Uh, it takes some getting used to. I carried a, a backpack like this across uh, four countries in Europe uh, on a two month 
a hitchhiking excursion that I did in Europe one time. So I, I do have experience carrying a bag just like this, about the same weight. I carried it for two months. So I, I do know, know what you need in a bag and what you don't need. Um, but <clears throat> the shoes stay with the bag and when we uh, practice with our bags or what you need to do with carrying a bag like this is you need to condition yourself. Uh, you don't want to just put on a 50 pound bag and just head out the door thinking that you're not going to have any problems with it. So what we do, my wife and I, uh, once a week we go for uh, a nice walk and I wear my bag and she wears our bags. And uh, at first they seem very, very heavy and because they are heavy, but uh, the more you uh, exercise with it, the uh, easier it gets. And, um, and, and after a certain amount of time, it's just natural. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. Now, <clears throat> on top of my bag, I have a tent. This is a dome tent. Uh, it says it sleeps three people. In my experience, uh, it comfortably sleeps two people. Um, but um, if you have, uh, you're bugging out with some children or something, you certainly can make room for uh, another few bodies in there. It is a, um, it has, it has a, a fly. It's good in the rain. Now for my bag and my wife too, uh, we of course do have the, the frames. And if you do use an Atlas pack like this or any kind of bag that, that you want to carry this much weight, you definitely want to have the frame uh, with, of course, the kidney pad and, of course, the padded shoulder pads. <clears throat> now, my bag, I also have the sleeping bag, the Gore-Tex uh, sleeping bag cover with the straps to attach it with. Um, you don't want to, when you're bugging out, you don't want things falling off of your bag or things working themselves loose. Um, like I said, a couple of bucks at my military supply. I do have the Gore-Tex sleeping bag cover. My sleeping bag is inside here. This is the sleeping bag cover. This can also be used as an emergency rain shelter, of course. Now one quick note I would like to make about bugging out, and that is, uh, in, according to my plan, bugging out is a last resort. We do not want to bug out. Most of the time you're going to be better off if you can stay at home uh, where you're protected, uh, where you have all of your supplies, and where you can defend your house and not have to uh, worry about the elements. Uh, so our plan is not to bug out. Our plan is to hunker down. And I think for most people that is the best plan. But a bug out bag is still a good thing to have because you never know, you might absolutely be forced to leave your house for any number of reasons. A tornado could just rip it to shreds or there, should, there could be a chemical uh, spill or a chemical attack that could make it inhabitable. Uh, but for whatever reason, if you do have to bug out, it is good to have a bug out bag. Now another thing a bug out bag is good for is uh, when we travel, we throw our bags in the trunk of the car and if some type of disaster occurs while we are traveling, we have all of our emergency supplies here. And if something happens and we can't um, uh, stay in our car, uh, say if uh, gasoline becomes unavailable and we have to hit the road on foot, you're going to be very, very glad that you have a bug out bag in a case like that. If you have to abandon your car, hit the road on foot, so our bug out bag might very well serve as a get home safely bag. Now we also have an emergency bag in the trunk of our car in addition to our bug out bags. Uh, your car, um, you're not as concerned about weight in your car, of course, as you are when you're carrying things. So we do have another large bag that's in the trunk of our car with some uh, additional supplies um, because if we're, if we're living out of our car, uh, these supplies could come in very uh, handy, but of course if we need to leave our car and hit the road, it's good to be portable. 
Now in the interest of time so that this video is not excessively long, I might not show you every single thing that's in my bug out bag. So I can see the comments coming now. What about this? You didn't have this in your bag. What about this? So just keep in mind that I may have other items in here. And if you have suggestions um, as far as um, things that I don't mention in, the, in uh, my bug out bag, then I suggest you make your own video and show us what is in your bug out bag. <clears throat> On the side here, I have my um, gas mask with the filter in there. All right, now in here also there's some extra room in there, so I do have some additional packets of uh, freeze-dried food in there. All right, this right here, of course, is a canteen, so I can carry some water. All right, in here I have some water uh, purification tablets. Over here on this side, I have a dromedary bag. This uh, is a four liter a dromedary bag. It actually holds um, a little bit more than a gallon uh, this uh, top right here is, uh, this is the same top that fits on a Nalgene bottle. And um, I have a water filter, it's not in my bag, but I've got a ceramic water filter in the trunk of my car that actually screws, the threads on it actually screw on a Nalgene bottle. It's an, M it's an MSR filter, so you can screw it on top of either an Nalgene bottle like this. And these are good bottles to have, of course, because they're very durable, they won't break, and they can, uh, they can even freeze and won't crack if they freeze. Um, but anyway, this is so I can carry another, an extra gallon of water. I don't know if I'll, I'll be carrying an extra gallon. Water weighs uh, eight pounds uh, a gallon. So if I fill this in the canteen over here, that's an extra um, 10 pounds. Of course, water is uh, something that's very, very essential. And so depending on the circumstances, I'm not sure how much water I'll be carrying. If I'm around water that I can uh, drink uh, easily, and I have a lot of walking to do, I won't necessarily be carrying that much water. But I do have the capability of carrying a lot of water if I need to. Now first of all, we'll take a look at what I have in the pockets. <clears throat> Here there's a, um, a case where you can put we can have maps, and I have maps of our state and the local area. There are some small pouches here. Various items. Here I have, um, this is actually a pistol cleaning kit. This is a multi-tool. I have a knife sharpener. There's the knife sharpener. A knife. Now I carry uh, I carry a knife just like this in my pocket. This is a spare because a knife is very very important. And here's some uh, more gun cleaning supplies. Here I have liquid soap. This is all-purpose soap. You can use this to uh, bathe with. You can also use it to wash your uh, cooking supplies and of course a sponge to wash with. Here I have extra magazines for my Glock 19. Extra ammunition in there. Here on the, out, on the outer uh, pockets where you can uh, easily get to them. I have <clears throat> a lot of freeze-dried food. As I mentioned, uh, freeze-dried food is very light and, um, and it is also, you can eat it right out of the packet. There's the other half of our radio uh, set. My wife has the other one in her bug out bag. More freeze-dried food, more freeze-dried food salt and pepper. This is my magnesium uh, fire starter. It has a compass in the top of it. And uh, magnesium on this side, what you do is you scrape off uh, some magnesium filings and uh, to, uh, to light your kindling and then you use this to light the magnesium. It's just a real easy way to uh, start a fire. 
<coughs> There's a knife for a fillet, fillet knife. Compass. A notebook, pencil to take notes with. Um, matches, lighter. And here's um had one of these in my wife's bag too. This is a real neat little uh, water filter. Now always, and, and th items like this, and like the fire start, I always like to leave the instructions with them too. Now I know how to use things, uh, these things, but uh, in case I'm uh, not available and someone else is uh, using my bag, um, it's, it's good. They might need the instructions if they're, they're not as familiar. That's a so solid uh, charcoal um, block in it. And with this, you can just stick this right down in the water and drink. Very neat little, uh, the very, very minimum, every bug out bag should have one of these types of uh, water filters. Here's a little fishing kit. Hooks, line, uh, lures, weights, and floats, everything you need to fish with. And extra batteries. Over here, this pocket, I have my poncho. These are good, uh, high quality ponchos that will cover not only us, but cover our bags too if we're walking in the rain. There's a mosquito net, goes over your head, and this is a, uh, an emergency uh, blanket. Uh, th this blanket is uh, not just to keep you warm, but this uh, will also hide your heat signature. If people are looking for you using infrared heat seekers, uh, this is something you can hide underneath and it will block, or it'll help to block uh, your heat signature. Okay, so much for the pockets. Let's look inside the bag. All right, here's some spices to make your food more palatable. This is a cooking kit. All right, here's another water filter. This is a good uh, water filter to uh, fill up your canteen with. This is a ceramic water filter. It's a ceramic element. You can put this down in the water and pump this. Uh, ceramic water filters are very, very, very good water filters. They last practically forever. When they get dirty, you can wash the ceramic. Okay, also in here, I have, this is actually a rain cover for the um, Alice pack so that you can just cover your entire Alice pack and protect it from the rain. And here I have some cord, plastic bags, various other pieces of equipment. I carry a real good uh, first aid kit, well packed with um, a lot of items that uh, I might need to perform first aid. In this bag I have certain toiletry items, um, more soap, um, deodorant. There's a little stove, a little alcohol stove, inflatable pillow. This actually is a little solar uh, kit. This uh, is a solar battery charger, and uh, I can charge the battery, say, in my um, uh, in my radios uh, with this solar battery charger. Toilet paper. This is a battery-operated radio. Towel. This is alcohol fuel for my alcohol stove. These are galoshers to keep my feet dry if I'm walking in the rain. And here's a bag of health of uh, extra clothing. As I mentioned, it's good to dress in layers. I have in here um, long underwear, very warm socks, an extra pair of pants that I can put over the pants that I'm wearing, and a sweater. And here's a nice little item to have. This is a actually a folding or collapsible bucket. 
And of course you can haul water with this, but another thing uh, that this uh, comes in handy with is to wash. You can put water in here and you can wash uh, to, um, you can heat water on your stove and have warm water in here to wash with, or you can also use this for washing your dishes. But that's something that comes in very handy. And there you go. This, these are the contents of Survival Docs bug out bag. And one more item that I might or might not carry in my bug out bag, depending on the uh, circumstances, is my kel Sub-2000 folding rifle. Now, what I really like about this rifle is it accepts Glock magazines. Uh, these are magazines for a Glock 17 9mm. And um, these magazines will also fit my Glock 19. And of course, both rifles will also use the high capacity magazines. Because you never know what you might need when you're bugging out. This is Survival Doc, reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be fleeced.